Guys, right. okay. we're live, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> That's right, okay. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. And I'm Dr. Peter Ince. Dr. Ince is a urologist that works in the hospital with us. He's very kind to come and join us and teach us about urological issues. And today we're talking about a really important one, especially during November as our mustaches show, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, okay. We have a bunch of questions about prostate cancer. Lots. For you. Um, First of all, the prostate. What is the prostate? I know you've said it in another video, but briefly. It's a small gland that basically provides nourishment for sperm, and the rest of the time it's sitting there doing nothing. Okay. And, and it seems obvious this is obviously only in the men. This is. Well, this, yeah. Your uh, XY chromosome. But women do, women do, yeah, women do not have a, have a prostate gland. Okay. It's important to recognize. So uh, now, like any gland yes. uh, or any body part, really, it can get cancer so you can get cancer of that so prostate cancer what is the deal with prostate cancer is it a very common cancer that you find unfortunately it is one of the most probably the most common uh, cancer in men probably one in nine men will be diagnosed with it at some point now although I say they're diagnosed with it I didn't say die of it because right. many people will have it and never have any problems from it. Okay, okay. important distinction. Okay, so prostate cancer is very common. Um, how is it detected? How do you know? How will someone out there watching this video know I have prostate cancer? Well, this is a very important point because you usually have no way of knowing unless you get screened for it. And by that I mean you do not get symptoms from prostate cancer. And this is what fools most people because sure. they think, I'm peeing fine, I don't wake up at night, everything down there works just great, there's right. no way I can have prostate cancer. Right. But the reason we have to screen for it, meaning do a PSA test or a rectal exam, is because if you wait for symptoms, by that time it's too late. So yeah. by symptoms, that would be spreading to other parts of your body, getting bony pain. Most times prostate cancer is detected by the test not because you're waking up at night to go pee. That is not a sign of prostate cancer. Okay. Okay. That's, important distinction. That's important. That's, wow. You just said a bunch of stuff that's really important. Uh, like many cancers or many disease processes, the earlier it's detected, the better the outcome of the treatment. If it's detected late, then the outcome of a treatment is worse. And now early detection means often detecting it before you're symptomatic. Exactly. So in order to detect something before you're symptomatic, we have to use things called screening tests or screening programs. And so the idea with this is undergo the screening test or the screening program to detect a disease presence before it's symptomatic so that the outcome of the treatment can be better. Is that, did I make that clear? Is that yes. Right? Okay. So if you have, a, if available to you is a screening program for prostate cancer, take advantage of it because it directly will affect your outcome if it's detected early. And we have a specific video talking about the PSA test, which is a blood test that measures a specific protein in our body that is related to the prostate and often will go up in association with prostate cancer. So you can watch that video, but PSA is part of the screening. But when someone comes to your office after they've been referred by their family doctor, they often have zero symptoms then is what we're saying. Absolutely. If they had any, is there, is there and one if that they, you... If they do have symptoms, it is unrelated to right. the prostate cancer. So if they come in and say, you know, I'm waking up at night, my flow is slow. That has nothing to do with prostate cancer in the right. vast majority of men. That's just benign blockage from the prostate growing, which happens in a vast majority of men after the age of 50, those things start. Right. Why are you pointing at me? <laughs> so you're not, gonna, you're not gonna come in and say, my prostate hurts, right? That's not a thing. It's a screening to exactly. get it detected. Exactly. All right, so you've done your screening, you've had your testing, which is, the PSA, plus or minus a rectal exam, maybe an MRI of your prostate, ultimately a biopsy, and I'm sorry to say, yes, we found some cancer cells. What do you do next? All right, so this is very important. Prostate cancer is not a single disease. Don't think of it that way. Okay. Too late. It is an entire <laughs> spectrum. Uh. So when someone says they have prostate cancer, that gives you very little information. Okay. Unfortunately, we've grouped it all into one big uh, heading called prostate cancer, but you can have prostate cancer that is just slightly abnormal cells to just moderately abnormal to highly aggressive cells. So it's the entire continuum. Now, early on, 
we thought that anything with prostate that was labeled as prostate cancer, we had to treat aggressively, right. take out the prostate or radiate it, do whatever. And all these people with very low grade prostate cancer, we now know that the vast majority of them may not ever need treatment. And they had to undergo significant treatment. And all those people underwent treatment initially. Now we do what we call surveillance so that people who have that low grade pro prostate cancer we just keep following that PSA over time, repeating biopsies to see if it changes into a more aggressive form of cancer. Okay. So that is the important thing to take home is that prostate cancer is a whole continuum of disease. So uh, that I would say is a very important message to take home. Okay, so like any cancer, when, as soon as it's detected, it's graded and staged. Grading looks at the type of cancer and how aggressive it is. Staging looks at if it's still staying where, where it was born or if it's spread around the rest of the body. So in the case of prostate cancer, it sounds like the grading is very important because if it's a low grade, you can just watch stay, it. watch it for a while. Well, that, that, that I would say is for the majority of people true. Now, <clears throat> if you're 45, and you have a low-grade prostate cancer, you have to have a discussion with your urologist because we know over time uh, the percentage of people who will eventually migrate to a higher stage, okay. uh, that is certainly a, a possibility. Whereas if you're diagnosed at 70 right. with a low grade, it's very likely you will never need treatment. Okay, So, so it's not clear cut. Right, it's how much, another variable is how much time the prostate has left to do something bad if it has a low exactly. grade cancer. With respect to the biopsy, this is an outpatient procedure under heavy sedation, would that be fair to say? No. No, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Okay. Um, a lot of centers will do it. Uh, it's a transrectal, meaning it goes, you're laying sideways on a table. Okay. It's not the funnest thing in the world. Okay, like colonoscopy kind of. Like colonoscopy. Okay. Um, an ultrasound probe goes into the rectum okay and then using a small needle freezing is put around the prostate in the nerves okay uh, some people do that some don't okay um, so you want to find the people that do <laughs> um, and then cores are taken through various spots of the prostate and if there's a particular nodule that was seen on the ultrasound they may take more cores of that so okay the whole thing can last anywhere between uh, five to 10 minutes up to 30 minutes, depending on how big the prostate is and how many biopsies they have to do. And then our pathologist looks at them under a microscope to identify the types of cells as well as the number of abnormal cells, essentially. Exactly. Okay. Okay, if you're squirming in your chair, you're, that's okay. You're not alone. It's a very common procedure, would you say? By a prostate very biopsy. common, okay. and you, you can get um, sedation. You can request like yeah. Ativan pills and, and so on to take beforehand. Maybe take some before you watch his, or listen to his description. <laughs> but, but it's an in and out kind of a test. Exactly. Yes, okay, excellent. Okay, so now we've got the abnormal cells. We have the prostate cancer diagnosis. Now you're in the office, you have the, the findings and your patients across you and it's like, now we're gonna have the discussion about what we found and now what are we gonna do? So usually when we get the biopsy back, uh, the, the point you, that you made, uh, Paul, about wanting to know, is it spread anywhere else? Right. So we know from thousands and thousands of cases before that based on the PSA, that will tell us a lot of information of whether this is going to be spread. Okay. So if you're, PSA, if you're diagnosed and your PSA is under 10, we know that there's that almost um, majority, the vast majority of these cases will be confined to the prostate okay. and can be curable just by treatment of the prostate. Now there's caveats to that of, of course, course because of course, of course. if you have a very high grade aggressive cancer and the PSA is still less than 10, that your risk of it having spread might be a bit higher. Okay. But the, the staging to see if it's spread, we, we rarely have to do um, much more than the, that testing. Some people will do a CT scan to check for lymph node enlargement to see if there might be spread. Some people will do an MRI of the prostate to see if there's any puncture of the capsule by tumor. Okay. Uh, so it depends uh, on your urologist and what they feel comfortable with as well. Wow, okay. And now let's say, fine, we're, we're in the place where we're in a high grade young person and you're gonna treat it 
definitively aiming for cure, what is the treatment? So once we've established that it's a prostate cancer that needs to be treated, yeah. so it's not just a low grade, it's in that range where we think it, it's going to cause problems if we leave it alone, Right. Uh, then, and we know that it's not spread anywhere, so we call that localized prostate cancer, curable prostate cancer, and that's the vast majority of cases okay. because of the screening and early, early detection. detection. Thank goodness. So once we know that it's localized, the recommended treatment uh, is surgery, radiation, or <coughs> excuse me, or brachytherapy, some some type of uh, seed uh, implants. Now, um, the modality of treatment is biased, of course, by the people who are offering it. Yep. Uh, personally, as a urologist, we feel that removal of the prostate entirely is uh, the probably the best treatment, especially for someone who's young and has biopsies showing disease on both sides of the prostate. Now, uh, that is the uh, recommended treatment for someone who's young and okay. healthy and has a long life. Okay. For someone who's older. Yep. Uh, radiation therapy directed at the prostate can cure it just as well as surgery and with lower risks that are that may be involved from having an anesthetic uh, and surgery when you're older and have other health issues but just higher long-term recurrence which is less of a concern I'm assuming for after radiation yeah uh, that I won't say yes to because I'll okay. have radiation oncologists calling me up okay but uh, both both can totally cure it, Amazing. even at a young age. Okay. okay. Hey, good news. So it is curable, uh, but remember, you want to detect it early uh, for it, for there to be a cure. And if you're higher stage, if, what if you're higher stage now and there's metastatic? Metastases means the cancer has spread, and we know that prostate does that. go to bone. That's sort of an yeah. overlap with our world. Uh, we do see prostate metastases in both. Is it still curable at that stage, or now is it just to control it as much <coughs> as you can think? <coughs> at, at once it's spread out of the prostate, it's not considered curable in, in a lot of cases. Now, if, if it's just one single spot and you radiate it, there is a chance. Mm -hmm. However, once you have spread to the bone, uh, it, it needs to be treated with uh, medication or, or chemo. chemo, but not the typical chemo. Usually it's the, a pill with an injection uh, every three to four months. Okay. Okay. And the good news about that is that People literally, with metastatic spread to their bones throughout their body, can still live for years. Right. Okay. okay. Holy cow. I see you walking in the hall every day. I never knew all that knowledge was in your head. Yep. Yeah. So, wow. There's a bit more, too. A, we just don't have time right now. But that is, that's a great summary of A, get tested if, if, if you're of the age or of the race or have risk factors for prostate cancer. There are very effective treatments and th that's encouraging for people. Like it's not. Yeah. Don't be afraid of it. Go get it checked out. Get it detected early. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Share it with someone that you know um, has a concern about prostate cancer. Dr. Ince, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge You're with us. You're welcome. Remember, you are in charge of your own health and your own prostate. We'll see you next time.